Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody, Psalm 150, verse 6, say that let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the lord we're gonna praise god this this evening and wherever you are around the world just have the heart of worship to worship god in spirit and in truth amen my amen. hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you oh. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Now in Creole, to hallelujah, Moise, who to hallelujah, Moise, who oh, to hallelujah, Moise, who to hallelujah. To hallelujah, Moise, who, who merited, who merited, who merited, who merited, my hallelujah belongs to you yes jesus my hallelujah belongs to you you deserve it you deserve it you deserve it thank you jesus you deserve it my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. To hallelujah, Moise, who? To hallelujah, to hallelujah, Moise, who? To hallelujah. To hallelujah, Moise, who you deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I give it, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, somebody. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, afternoon by afternoon, evening by evening, new mercies we see. All I have need that thou hands have provided. Great is the life faithfulness, Lord, 
to me. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, somebody. Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. Every day our going out and our coming in, he continues to preserve you and me. He continues to protect us. He continues to bless Pastor Benjamin and his ministry. And all of you, we can, we can attest to the good word of God that our pastor gives us every day and every minute. We thank God for this opportunity. There are areas in this world that people hide themselves to worship God, but we have the liberty to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is why we all say, great is thy faithfulness, O God. We continue to give you glory in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah be unto the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Lord, we give you praise. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Sylvia, God bless you always. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are Absolutely. going to take the scripture and then we are going to pray right now. Praise the Lord. Let us open our Bibles to the book of First Timothy chapter 2, beginning from verse 1 to 4. First Timothy chapter 2, beginning from verse 1 to 4. Amen. First Timothy chapter five, chapter chapter two, beginning from verse one to four. And I read. The Lord bless our dear sister Sylvia. She's such a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. And I read. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. This is the will of God that we should pray today. That men, women, children, everyone in your household, in your neighborhood, your friends, your community be saved. That is the will of God. That the gospel should reach the ends of the earth and then Jesus will come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather at your feet, O Lord, to learn of you in this Bible study. We declare this meeting is a guardian on a Messiah unto you, O Lord. This meeting is blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we call all those who are watching, their family, their household, their community, their friends, their neighborhood, blessed that the word of God will spread to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you for the witnesses across the harvest field, O Lord. Father, we pray the blood of Jesus, O Lord, appear to everyone who is watching by your word. Reveal yourself to them by your word, oh Lord. You are the word. We thank you that souls will be saved today in accordance with the, what you did with Cornelius, Cornelius and his household and his community and his brethren, oh Lord. Father, you are the same God. You have no change. We thank you that you will do it tonight, oh Lord. We have declared your word. This is your will that all men be saved, oh Lord. Thank you that souls are being saved right now across the harvest field of the head. We cover this service, this broker with the blood of Jesus. We cover the equipment, the internet, the homes, all those who are watching and those who will yet watch with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. We we go straight into the war today. Hallelujah. We will continue from where we stopped last week. Advancing the kingdom of God. Today is the next installment, part 53. Advancing the kingdom of God, part 53. Now, if you are new to this broadcast and or you are joining us for the first time or seeing this video for the first time, we welcome you. And we thank you for the privilege that we're able to reach you and your family in your living rooms. But I want to strongly encourage you after this broadcast to revisit our earlier broadcast, the introductory series, Advancing the Kingdom of God, parts one through six. There you will see all of the introduction, the definitions, the primers, if you will. So that when we say the kingdom of God, you'll be up to speed where we are. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now let's get into today's business. Shall we open our Bibles all together? Let's read together this Bible study to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And I read, the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That is the word of God for you. Put yourself in the Bible. This is God speaking to you. I receive it in my spirit in the name of Jesus. And now we go to the second anchor scripture, which is Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. And I read. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make, make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed amen praise the lord that is the word of god that people have reason to bless you because god will bless them and anyone who side with the satan they already judged that is a covenant god say i ah, it's a covenant that's it pay attention to that that's the will of god now let's go fast forward to matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Seek the kingdom, seek the kingdom of God. The free gift, the greater blessing of mankind is righteousness. To be in right standing with God. And everything that you are looking for in life will be added to you. So, today we continue with the sub series in this Advancing the Kingdom of God. We have been dealing for several weeks now on the spirit of seeing and knowing. So, we continue with the spirit of seeing and knowing. Praise the Lord. So let's open our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1 to 4. Let's read together. Because this word that we read is spirit and it's life. The Bible says that the law of the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus now dwells in us. So the more we read it, the more the spirit enters into all. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. And we become what God says as we declare with our mouth. Praise the Lord. So Ezekiel, so Deuteronomy chapter 12, 34. Verse 1 to 4. And I read, And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, 
and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south at the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees unto Zoab. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed, and I will have, and I will give it unto thy seed, and I've caused thee to see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not go over Titan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise God. Now we continue with this subtitle of the spirit of sin and knowing. Moses, by encounter with the spirit of God, with the Lord, was at Mount Nebo. There, Moses saw things that no man can see. He knew things that no man can know. And he saw. Now he began to see the way God sees it. Praise the Lord. This past Monday, I was uh, in a in a a Bible teaching with a uh, Pastor Benehi at the Benehi Institute, and uh, he made a comment about this encounter. Praise the Lord. That is uh, that is really that's really good. That. The Lord has revealed to him what we are saying. He said, he has been, I mean, he's from Israel before he came to the United States. So he, so he said he has been to Mount Nebo. Physically, he has been there at the top of Mount Nebo. But if you are at the top of Mount Nebo, you can't even see half of Israel. Least of all, all of Israel. You don't, you don't see much. That Moses' encounter at Mount Nebo was a supernatural encounter. This is what we've been talking about since all this time. That encounter at Mount Nebo is where you see things that no man can see. Because this is a confirmation of what we've been talking about since. And you know things that no man can know because it's a supernatural encounter. You know, open your supernatural eye to see beyond the boundary of light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Jesus. And we said that this come by the word. How? By staying in front of the word all the time. Pay attention to, to what we're going to talk about today. It may yet be that your deliverance for all things is now. Only by the word. And we say that encounter with Jesus is the spiritual climbing of Mount Nebo. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you will see things that no man can see. You will know things that no man can know. And you begin to see it the way he sees it. Praise the Lord. I gave you an example before. How that John... Apostle John was banished to the island of Patmos. And he was in the spirit on the last day. That is in the world. Meditating. Suddenly had an encounter. And the Lord himself appeared to him and took him to a very high mountain. An encounter at my neighbor in the spirit. And what happened? John saw the end of this world as we know it. He saw many other things that are not permitted to be written in the book of Revelation, which he wrote. That encounter culminated in the writing of the book of Revelation by Apostle John. He only put some things there that he was given permission to put down for us to know. He knows so much more that we don't know. Encounter with Jesus. John saw the end of this world as we know it. And he saw the new world the heavenly Jerusalem coming down from heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. John saw the future and the end of all things by divine privilege of encounter with Jesus via the world. Praise the Lord. Please. I, I really, I want to strongly 
strongly encourage you to take note of what we are about to talk about in the few minutes we have remaining of the revelation that God has given me today for today's meeting. I don't prepare all this. Thing. I just wrote it down like about half an hour ago before this meeting started. I have no clue what I want to say. He is the one that tell me, anything he tell me is what I declared. So let's, be, I'm speaking to myself and then please receive, amen? Praise the Lord. Let's look at one scripture we saw last week. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. Let's go there. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. We are going to conclude today's meeting with going back to what happened to Joseph. Psalm 105, verse 19 to 22. Because we have been following the example of Joseph as Jesus is revealing the scripture in the New Testament that, look, this is not, not something new. It has happened before. Here are the examples that will encourage you to live your full Christian life and believe what God says concerning you. Because if it's Jesus, you say, well, Jesus is law, he's my God. Of course, he's God. Joseph is a man approved by God, like you, a believer. So let's pay attention. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. And I read, and he said unto them, where is your faith? And they being afraid wonder, saying one to another, what manner is this? For he commanded evil the winds and water, and they obey him. Please pay attention to that. Jesus said, where is your faith? You know? It took me a long time to really figure this, where is your faith? Because faith, you cannot hold it. You cannot, you cannot, it's not tangible, but it's the currency of the kingdom of God. Without faith, nobody can please God. Jesus was asking, because these apostles that have been with them, through his calling them, he has seen, they have seen miracles. Peter's boat was empty, filled with fish in daytime, all natural elements gave way so that science and wonder had become a part of their life. The, the wedding in the canal of Galilee, all of the water turned into wine, Jesus signifying that through his death, the spirit will be poured forth and the church will be buried. So, and he will share his blood for his church that we become his blood sprinkled church. That is what that is all it is. So feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of fish, uh, bread and two fishes, and the, and the 4,000 with seven fishes and two loaves of bread, and with seven loaves of bread and, and, and two fishes, and all the diverse miracles, diverse, diverse miracles, healings, deliverances. Raising the dead. So they were used to the miracles. And they were used to the power, power and the might of God manifesting our flesh. The Bible said they beheld him as the only begotten son of God. They behave his glory. This is now what brings us to where we are now. Jesus was in the boat with them and sleeping. The spirit of faith was at work in him, sleeping. Peace, perfect peace in his storm. What was the thing that came out of the mouth of the, of the disciples? They were so scared that they want to perish. That is what we are talking about now. How is it that you are so quick to recognize all the problems around you, the contradiction? Where is Jesus? So Jesus was asking them, where is your faith? He was asking them, where did you leave Jesus? I am your faith. 
Did you leave me at the short point? Did you leave me in Capernaum? Did you leave me in Cana of Galilee? Am I not in this same boat with you right now? You say, well, but I bet. I will never do that if I was there, really. Please come and lay hand on me. You are really, you are really perfect. Didn't you have the Holy Spirit in you right now? Did Jesus not give you the Holy Spirit? Is he not a king of the invisible kingdom that lives in your heart? Why do you then acknowledge all the contradictions before you even recognize his presence? We will see it in the life of Joseph, how he won battles. You see, where is your faith implies where is Jesus? The moment the disciples focused on themselves and not Jesus, they were headed out for defeat. The moment you focus on yourself and not the greater one that is at work in you, that lives in you, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, then you really lose being in front of his face. And that is a recipe for defeat and disaster. So if you don't know what faith is, faith is not something you see, you believe, you call it to be. Just know that Jesus is my faith. He is the author of faith. He gave it to us. So Jesus is my faith. Say it. Jesus is my faith. Say it. Jesus is my faith. So know this. He said, wherever I am, here you are. I will never leave you. I will forsake you. We are going to get there very soon. So when you go to church in your neighborhood, don't leave Jesus in the church building and come home without Jesus. Because Jesus does not reside in the temple you build by hands. He resides in us. He made us in his image and likeness. He is God, son of God. So he lives in you. So do not forget that Jesus is with you at all time. And acknowledge his presence. Always acknowledge and recognize his presence. And the more you recognize his presence, because where he is, that there is nothing is that is permitted to come in that is contrary to holiness of God. Where he is, if you acknowledge that he's always with you and that he lives in you and that he's permanently ever with you, you will see your contradictions flee on their own from you because of divine presence. That is what is happening here. Have this edge in your spirit and settle it that Jesus is always with you. I will share some scriptures. Genesis. Let's look, before we go to Psalm 105, verse 19 22, let's look at some scriptures and then we begin to see what this means. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. In the life of Joseph, as we continue, Genesis 39, verse 2. Genesis 39, verse 2. The Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. For his Lord, Joseph received an encounter, just like you did sold by his brothers into slavery in the hands of the merchant men, sold to Potiphar as a slave in Potiphar's house because Joseph understood who called him, the vision he has received. He was mindful of the spirit of God that was at work in him by privilege. So he was conscious of divine presence. And as long as Joseph was conscious of divine presence, even those things that were meant to oppress him became subject to him. For example, this is what this very president calls. Pay attention to this. He was supposed to be subdued as a slave in Potiphar's house. But because he was mindful of the greater one that works in him, even Potiphar became subject to Joseph. He gave Joseph to be in charge of all his words. He knew nothing that he had because everything's prosper because of divine presence. Except his wife. Of course, that's his wife. 
that is how you are supposed to live as a believer. And Joseph was in a hostile country where there are no Christians, there are no, no Judaism. It's a pagan country with soothsayers, magicians, all manner of herbalists that, that are the gods of Pharaoh. But because Joseph was a man that practiced divine presence, understanding who gave him the heavenly vision, all those elements were subdued. And Joseph was in charge in his supposed captivity. Praise the Lord. Please pay attention to this. Because Jesus never departed from Joseph. Because he is the word. Joseph received a word, the vision. We shall see that sh shortly. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 21. Now Joseph is already in prison. He had no training whatsoever of how to handle prisoners. And the prisoner, the prison was supposed to subdue him and conquer him mentally. But watch what happened. Because Joseph always practiced divine presence, he is conscious of who is at work in him and on him. The prison became subject to, to, to Joseph and he became the officer in charge of the prison. All the things that were meant to dominate him, now we are subjective to him. He had authority over them because of who? The one that is at work in him. He already practiced divine presence. So, where did you leave Jesus? Jesus is asking, where is your faith? Where is your Jesus? Where did you leave Jesus? Where did you leave Jesus? Did you leave him in a church building, some physical building? Jesus is ever present, is with you. The book of John, the Lord was always with Joseph because he always recognized his presence. Always recognized his presence. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his hand shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Hebrews, Hebrews. He said, He shall feed his flock like his shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with the young. That is the covenant word. Before you start asking, where is God in all of these things? Ask yourself, did I put all of these things before God? Which one am I seeing? Is it God or all of these things? That is the example that Joseph has, we have seen for the life of Joseph. Hebrews 13, verse 5, verse, verse 5b. Hebrews 13, verse 5b. Hebrews 13, verse 5b. The Bible say, For he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. That's Jesus. He will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. That is the word of God, scripture. I ask you one more time, where is your faith? Where is your Jesus? Where did you leave Jesus out of all your challenges? Did you recognize his presence first before you descend the problems and let his presence dominate those problems? You know, before I read, before, in fact, let's read it and I'll come back again and I will close with that. We will take three, two more scriptures and we really conclude on where we are going today. Let's open our Bible to the book of Psalm, 
chapter 1 to 5, verse 19 to 22. This is the Lord speaking to you. Receive it. Psalm 105, and we're going to read it twice. We'll read it, go back to the book of John, and come back to it. It will be really very clear. Psalm 105. As the Lord directs me. Verses 19 to 22. The Bible says, until the time that the, his word came, pay attention to that, his word. His word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The word of the Lord. Well, we shall soon find out what is the word of the Lord. So the, the effect of the word of the Lord was this. The king sent and loosed him. One, and the, and even without the people and let him go free. He became a free man. He made him lord of his house, prime minister, and ruler of all his sultans, minister of finance, productivity, and interior, to bind his princes at his pleasure, justice minister, and teach his senators wisdom, senate president, all by the word of God. In a strange land where Joseph, like we said before, had no passport, no green card, no citizenship, no social security number, Yet he became all of this by the word of the Lord. That that brings us, that brings us to where we are, we are today, where we will study today. The Bible says the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord? Let's open our Bibles to the book of the book of. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Please, the Bible said, we just read just now that the word of the Lord came unto Joseph. Before his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Let's see what is that word and who is that word. Please pay attention to this. I read verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay. Let's just pause for a moment. The Bible is made up of two major two major uh, sessions. The old all the all the prophets and all the first five of the Bible, known as the old covenant, the old testament, and then the new covenant, the new testament. The new testament is the introduction of Jesus, and then he received his name from the Father. The name that's above all name, Jesus Christ. Now, from Malachi all the way back to Genesis is the Old Covenant books. That time, the name of Jesus is the Word. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It said nothing was ever made that was made without him. So him and the Word. The word became him. The word became flesh. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of God. And he has declared the father. If you see Jesus, you have seen the father. Please pay attention to this because this now brings us one thing. You always ask yourself, where is Jesus in all of this? But Jesus is always with you. He still remains the word without knowing him as Jesus Christ the anointed, the Mashiach of God, the Messiah. But he is still the word because of the law of first mention. The law of first mention runs from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word that appeared to Joseph in the Old Testament. And the Bible said that in him was, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
in the midst of a hostile environment, the word keep appearing to Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph because Joseph was mindful of the word he received. As he was mindful of that word, he was clothed in Christ in Jesus. He was clothed in divine presence. And the contradictions were no match for the presence of God upon his life. So the, right now, I'm using a pad for my Bible today. So the next time you pick your Bible to read, be mindful of who you are carrying. It's not a text. It's a spirit and life. Jesus is the word. is ever with you in the Bible, in your computer. Every device is ever present in your heart. He is there. So before you, you, you keep complaining and keep questioning God and begin to stop trusting, ask yourself at all time, everywhere, what do I acknowledge? Do I recognize his presence first? Is he first place in my life before I start discerning challenges around me? What is the order of precedence in your life? Now, let's go back to Psalm 105, verse 19 to 22. I read verse 19 again. The Bible says, Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent him and loosed him. The Pharaoh must bow at the word of God. Joseph had to take charge of the country. Pay attention to this, of what the word of God can do in a place that is hostile with magician, with astrology, with magician, with the herbalist, the marabas, you name them. Pay attention to what the word of God can do. Egypt, Pharaoh would swear because it was almost like a god because of the armor in which he trusted in the greatest army in the world at that time. He had magicians, soothsayers, herbalists, all manner of dark powers surrounding him to protect himself. And he was calling them at, they were at his beck and call. Here was Joseph in the thick of a hidden pagan country at that time. But Joseph was always mindful of the word that was always present in his life. And the word we know, now know is Jesus. He never left Jesus, Joseph alone. And he will never leave you alone. He had not been manifested physically as Jesus that time, but he is the word as we now know from John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. So as long as Joseph was mindful Meditated on the word that he received by the Spirit of God. We didn't have a Bible like we have now. As long as he keep meditating, and that image is forming his heart, he knows who, who is with him. He has put on righteousness. He seek after righteousness. As long as he always stay in divine presence. Watch this. In the middle the headquarters of the hidden world. Even the gods of Egypt. Joseph must ascend to the throne as God has ordained in his vision. And when he did, even the gods of Egypt and all the forces of opposition, they were silenced. All the magicians, all the soothsayers, all the all the dark powers, they were rendered impotent by the word of God and made of none effect. And they could not provide Pharaoh with any solution of impending famine and starvation. And then that could they interpret his dream. But by the spirit of God, the word, I praise the Lord. You see, revelation knowledge in Christ Jesus that is how you keep changing levels and keep advancing. Jesus is your faith. Where is your Jesus? 
did you live in somewhere he's ever with you? Be conscious of that. Only Joseph, in the midst of a darkness, thick darkness, by the Spirit of God, light that shined, and no one can have that light, reveals, received the revelation that, that, was this, that became the solution to the country of Egypt. And Pharaoh's problems came to an end. All the gods of Egypt, all the herbalists, all the magicians, all the soothsayers, all the wise men, they couldn't help him. Only the Spirit of God by the Word of God. Praise the Lord. The Word of the Lord came to Joseph and he revealed the secrets to Pharaoh and helped Pharaoh. Pharaoh did not help, help, help Joseph. Without Egypt, they will perish. Without, without the, the, the Joseph, they will perish. Now, let's see the conclusion of this matter. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Ah, this is great. What the word of God can do. Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. Genesis 41, 38. And Pharaoh, this is this is the head of all the power of darkness, the head of all the magicians, the astrologer, the soothsayer, the military, everything. This is what he confessed of the God of Joseph, the Hebrew God. Watch. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this? Is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, I preach myself happy. I repeat. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? We just saw in the scripture, even Pharaoh and the gods of Egypt confessed that there is none but the Hebrew God. There is none but God. There is none but Jesus who is Lord. Who is the word? Who is appearing to Joseph? And Jesus Christ, the anointed of God, who is the word, is still appearing to people today and has appeared to you via his word today. This is what will happen when you practice his presence. Even those who oppose you, who swore that it won't amount to anything, they will worship the God that you serve. Do we confirm that Jesus, who is the word, is Lord? Because nothing can stand the word of God as we just saw in this example. This is why Jesus is asking his disciples, where is your faith? Where is your Jesus? Who is the word? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Finally, here is the conclusion of this matter. <laughs> Let's open our Bible to the book of Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. The Bible says, and I read, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Say, we will go with you, for we have heard that, the, that God is with you. All of the Egyptians, beginning with Pharaoh, had to run after Joseph, saying, ah, Joseph, we will let you go. Please rule us, be in charge. Be in charge. Be in charge. Because we have seen that God is with you. We will confess that your Lord is God. That is what happens to you when God appears to you via the world. That changes your level via encounters. If you are mindful and you recognize that presence and the opportunity, and if you recognize that opportunity and you keep acknowledging that presence, and you really, 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 Put that presence first place, which is the word. 
this is what will happen to you. This was a Jew. But the Bible says it's not a thing that's a Jew. In fact, the Bible says it's not a Jew that is physical by birth, but that circumcision is of the heart, whose praise is not of men, but unto God. If you give your life to Jesus, you have been circumcised in your heart. And when you recognize his presence always, this will begin to happen to you. Regardless of any contradiction, but they will bow to the word of God. This is what the word of God can do in the midst of very stark challenges that you first recognize his presence that is alive in your heart before any you can design anything that happen around you. All the places Joseph was, he always put on Jesus, his presence. And let me just say this. Maybe it didn't really occur to you. Did you ever think about this? That because of divine presence in the life of Joseph, in a foreign place where he has no relationship with nothing, that Joseph suddenly inherited the wealth of the entire country? The entire country, the wealth of the entire country was put into the hands of Joseph. Because of divine presence. And you see, there's no man of God living right now that is as rich as Joseph, apart from inheriting the wealth of the entire nation at his disposal and be in command of the greatest military in the world at his disposal. Joseph was mindful of the world. His heart was always reached towards God. He got there by the love way, by the world way. He got there by the forgiveness way. He got there by the compassion way. He got there by the prayer way. All of this we see in the life of Jesus as he's unveiling and establishing the kingdom of God. And then we look back and see all of this that has happened, how it has happened through common men that God has anointed. Qualify them. God doesn't call the qualify. That is from Barakali Kupia, I for the first time. God calls you and qualifies you. So God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. In your situation, begin to understand and really, really, don't let Jesus be far from you. Know that he's ever with you. Where is your Jesus? Recognize his presence and you see all the circumstances begin to bow because his name is above all. Is highly exalted above the heavens in glory at the hand of the power and the, the Father. All power is in his hands. And he is the one that has commissioned you in your God given assignment on earth. Remember, you are not alone. Praise the Lord. He's always with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So today, don't make that word to be like a cliche. It really means what it says, that I will never leave you or forsake you because he who is the world is always with you. Don't put the word under your pillow and sleep. No, read it and let the spirit of life, the spirit of the law of life in Christ Jesus, let it enter into you and dwell in you. He said, the word I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And you begin to change encounters as you read this word, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed and you, you receive that such a big amen, you say, Brother Ben, this is good. How can I be a part of this? Good question. Very simple. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. And I read. The Bible says, For he said, I will hear thee any time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is your day of salvation. If you are a believer and you've been challenged because of events of recent times, and you miss it, Jesus should say, I'm ever before you. Come. Come into my warm embrace. I will receive you and have your back and establish you. 
if you are a man of God who have made so much word, or you think you've arrived, and your heart is no longer reached towards God, God is saying, come, today is your day. Today is your day of salvation. You say, Brother Ben, I have never been to church my whole life. I don't have a Bible. I really very honest. I appreciate that. Thank you. That is why we are watching now. This is your day. In fact, this broadcast is all for you. Praise the Lord. The Lord has ordained that he will visit you today. This is your day. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wherever you are in the journey of life, whatever is your circumstance, where is your Jesus? Let Jesus be first place, who is the world. Praise the Lord. If you believe that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh Lord, we thank you for your word that has gone forward. Your word is blessed, and we have received the blessed word and are blessed. Father, be it unto us as you have spoken, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, open our eyes, O oh Lord, to recognize your presence. Always put on, give us eyesight, O oh Lord, to put in our eyes to see clearly, O oh Lord, to always see you, O oh Lord, before we discern any other thing, O oh Lord. To always see Jesus, his divine presence, O oh Lord, before we discern any, any contradiction around us, O oh Lord. We thank you that it is done. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now let's pray this self -tanning. Lord Jesus, the Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe he died for me. On the third day he rose again. He is highly exalted, ascended in heaven, ever lived and praying for me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life, please, and be Lord over my life. Take my life and do something with my life. And now I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I believe I receive. I'm born again now. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You made it. You are in. God has res rescued you. He has restored you. All your iniquities have been blotted away by the blood of Jesus. You are now in. Praise the Lord. Quick announcement. If you pray that prayer, earnestly, and you are very far from us, we are in New Jersey, I, I encourage you to find a Bible-believing church in your neighborhood and join. And uh, if you just give your life to Christ, tell the man of God that you just get, become became born again. And that you need water baptism so that can arrange the baptism for you. Water baptism is very important. When Jesus was baptized during his early ministry, instantly God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was manifested. That is the potency of water baptism. So please, Get that done quickly and fast. Return to this broadcast. Sow this message forward. And let's continue to edify one another. Sow this message. Please share this message, this teaching. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and if you would like to volunteer or join us and be a part of what we are doing here, and you want to find out how you can be a part of this, and also, you want to share your testimony, or you want to simply, simply give us your good news of your salvation or being born again. Please write to us. The email address is newbird at lhwar.org. Newbird at lhwar.org. New bed at lhwar.org. 
Also, we have some training program also that is for professional track, people who are working or professionals who want to work. We have a training course that is uh, in uh, data analytics and SaaS programming. These are really immediately applicable skills. If you want to change career and you feel that you want to be able to have the flexibility to work from home and work across geographies, wherever you are, all you need is, in the, all you need is a, a, a internet and a laptop. This is good for you. We encourage you to uh, email us at info at starting.net or text us at 732-595-8974 for more information. The Lord bless you as you do. Now we have been sharing the word of God and we are being blessed here. If you are being blessed, you see, the word of God is a seed. When you respond to the seed, you see supernatural manifestation in your hand. That seed will turn in your hand. And Jesus, who is the word that you have received, will multiply that seed. That is a revelation of seed time and harvest. So I want to encourage you to be a blessing and give to this word. And there are three ways you can give. PayPal.me for us last word today. Cash up. And you can also visit our website and give. So these are the ways in which you can give. Praise the Lord. So as we pray now and take a, as we pray, and then we take a, a worship song, let us give, let us give uh, as the Lord has enabled us cheerfully and joyfully. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing. The word is blessing. That we are able by privilege to read the word and be in front of the face of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, Prosper the word in the hearts of those who have received this word today. That they always practice your presence, O oh Lord. Even as they sow their seed now, O oh Lord. Give them a revelation of their sowing, that they are putting their seed into your hand, O oh Lord. That you are the one that will multiply that seed supernaturally in their hand as they are receiving encounters from you, O oh Lord. We call their giving, their tithes, their blessings, their, their seeds blessed. We call them blessed. We pray that you open their eyes to recognize opportunities, that they will be at the right place at the right time, that you will rain the heavens over them, O oh Lord, and they will always be at the right place at the right time with the right people, doing the right thing all the time in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise the Lord. 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 <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's take the word. Now let's take our, let's take our worship song as we give. Let's take this worship song from Pastor Benny here. See his glory. You will see his glory this night in the name of even right now. Amen.
precious people, tell the Lord we want to see your glory. See your glory. See your glory come down as we praise your name, as we praise your name, heaven reigns. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We thank God for your life, for your family. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for joining us today. We believe you've been blessed by this program. We hope you've been blessed. We have been blessed by the word of God. And we believe the same for you in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, this is the word today. A beacon of light to a hot and warm, brought to you by Living Hope Christian Center. My name is Brother Benjamin. Call me Brother Ben. I count it double honor, such a privilege and joy to be able to share with you what the Lord is revealing to me as I read the scripture. The scripture, the Spirit of God is real. It speaks to you as you open the book of life. So I count it double honor. Please sow this teaching forward. Invite your friends, your family, and find a way you can volunteer and become a part of this community. Join this movement. God bless you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord put his name upon you. You are named by the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. I really thank you for joining us. And I thank God that we have been made to change levels today by this word. Now, join us again on Sunday and visit this site every time to check for our podcast. So we are we are trying to even be more regular on a daily basis, short, short podcast. But we have our Bible studies on Thursday evening, this one at 5, at 5 p.m. And we have uh, our Sunday virtual service at 9 a.m. on Sunday. God bless you. God keep you. God protect you is my prayer. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Now let's share the goodness together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the true fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, Lord goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our of of our life, and we shall do it in the hands of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shalom.